I'm Kat, your friendly local expert, and today we are diving into Antwerp. We're going to show you what to do in Antwerp if it's only one day. And we're starting with the station. Follow me. Now we'll assume you are coming to Antwerp by train, as that is the easiest and quickest way to reach it from any major town in Belgium. But even if you're not coming by train, we highly suggest you don't skip the station. I mean, just look at it! Is it surprising at all that it's a regular on lists naming the world's most beautiful railway stations? Just look at it! Now the station itself is a well-known attraction, but did you know that it shares this pretty cool wall with the zoo, which is a next door neighbor? And there is this statue, which is just begging to take photos of. Moving from the station towards the center, you will go down the Meer, the iconic shopping street. It is usually pretty crowded, but the stunning buildings more than make up for that. Fun fact, it has one of the highest rents of any street in Belgium. Once you're here, definitely pop in to check out the beautifully restored 19th century exhibition hall that is now a popular shopping center. We've arrived at Grunplatz. The name translates to Green Square, and that is because back in the medieval times it was used as a cemetery that was attached to the cathedral. From here you have a great view on the cathedral, which is our next stop. If you could visit only one spot in Antwerp, most people would probably insist on the cathedral. Legally, there cannot be a structure in the city taller than the cathedral. And if you look at the panorama of the city, nothing can compete with the Gothic tower that is 123 meters tall. Pro tip, if you live in Antwerp, you don't have to pay for the entry ticket, it's free! Not many people know that there is a cute cafe hidden inside the cathedral in the old St. John's Chapel. You could grab a quick bite here, have a cup of coffee, or try the two cathedral beers. Yep, the whole country is so obsessed with beer that you can buy one even in a church. Hello, we haven't been properly introduced yet, but I'm Amanda and I am the counterpart of Kat in Bite Size Belgium. And we are here in the center of Antwerp in a little secret hidden gem spot called the Blake and Scott. Um, so we did a little research. It's Maybe one of the narrowest streets of Antwerp, maybe one of the oldest, but definitely one of the most beautiful. So let's check it out. It turns out this not-so-secret alleyway was actually constructed in 1591. It used to be where the shoemakers and the poorest people of the city lived. But nowadays the street holds art galleries and even a few nice restaurants. It's a little hidden gem near the very center of the city that makes you feel like you've been transported through time. After you've wandered through the Vlekensgang, you're just a few minutes away from the main square of Antwerp, also known as the Grote Markt. This market square is smack dab in the heart of the city and holds the city hall, beautiful 16th century guild halls, and bars and restaurants to your heart's content. The main centerpiece is the Bravo Fountain, showcasing our hero Bravo throwing a giant's hand into the river. Did you know that Antwerpen is a derivative of the word meaning hand throwing? That's why you see so many hands featured in the city. The hands lead us to our next destination, the Museum an de Strom, or simply the Moss Museum for short. The Moss Museum has 10 different floors and rotating exhibitions. Tickets to explore the museum cost 12 euro, but we're here to let you know you can go get the best views of the city free of charge. The rooftop terrace here at the Moss allows a panoramic view of the city from the port all the way to the River Skelle. See that building over there? That's where we started the tour today.
Even if you're not a museum person, there are many great sites around the islandsha in the north of the city. If you decide the moss isn't your thing, you can take a walk alongside the water, stop and get a drink at a local bar, or check out one of the many other attractions in the north. If museums are your thing, then we suggest you check out the moss since you're already there. If you would rather see another museum, here's a list of plenty that are around Antwerp that you can spend hours upon hours checking out. When you're done getting cultured, you can live like a local and make a beeline to Hutzad. While you're in the south, make your way over to Badroy's Fijo. This trendy bar opened in 2016, and only after six months, it was awarded the best cocktail bar in Belgium. Just a word to the wise, the bar itself is very small and cozy. If you get cell phone reception, you are one of the blessed. But regardless, you will definitely already be rewarded with a tasty cocktail or two. So right now, we are on our way to the Marnix Platz, which is like this cute little square, it's actually a circle, where there is a lot of bars and restaurants to choose from. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the list here. Uh, and then you'll see what we decided to choose for the night, but by all means, not what you have to choose. Let's go. There are many cool bars and restaurants situated around this big roundabout. For food, there are plenty of options to choose from, from bistro meat and eat with several delicious steaks, to Fiska Bar if you prefer seafood, Takumi Ramen Kitchen serves delicious ramen, you can't really go wrong with any of your choices. One of our favorite bars in the Marnique spots is Bar Vitrine, where you can find many locals sitting by big windows, which is where this name comes from. And that's it from us. Hopefully we've made you feel a bit inspired to check out Antwerp. Feel free to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we'll see you in the next video. Stay hungry.